Hello, Janesville, and welcome to Behind the Curtain, where we highlight things that are happening at JPEG, Janesville's Performing Arts Center, right next door to the Hedberg Public Library, where our studio is. Today, we have a couple of fantastic people here. Of course, we have Jim McCulloch, who's the Education and Outreach Director for JPEG. Welcome back. Hi, Alan. And Alan. then we also have a new guy here. This is <laughs> Chris Ogden, and he is actually one of the co-directors for the upcoming It's a Wonderful Life. So we got things coming up. Why don't we talk about November, since we are in November, and what's what's coming down the pike? Got a lot of stuff coming up in November, Alan. Uh, the holidays are upon us, and we've got our recitals for our kids' programming. We've got uh, three different uh, classes that we are going to be featuring in our uh, annual music and drama festival, which is on the 26th of November. And what that is, it's a combination of um, our improv for youth class, we've got two acting classes, and a singing class. So they're all going to be doing a little bit of a uh, uh, performance of what they've been learning for the last eight weeks. And tickets are $5 for that. <clears throat> it starts at 6.30. It's open to the public. Um, it's in the big auditorium, so it gives our kids a chance to uh, perform on the big stage to see what that's like under the bright lights. And uh, they have a really good time. It's a lot of fun, and we're really looking forward to having the, uh, the people come and see us. So what, uh, what music directors are, are actively working uh, with? Right kids? now, uh, the two classes I teach, I teach two acting classes. I teach one that's called Out of the Wings, which is for our younger students, third grade through fifth grade. Uh, and they're going to be doing a small version of, um, it's, a, it's a little past the season, but it's still Thanksgiving, uh, The Ugliest Pumpkin. It's kind of a takeoff on The Ugly Duckling, except we use pumpkins and squash instead of, uh, ducks and swans. So they'll be doing a little production of that. Uh, in fact, they'll be working on costumes later on this afternoon. They'll be making their own things. And then uh, the other acting class I have is, uh, it's called It's Showtime, and that's for my older kids. So I've got uh, middle school primarily. So that goes from sixth grade through ninth grade. And um, they will be performing a version of Jack and the Beanstalk, kind of an old take on the, uh, or a new take on the old story. Um, and then we've got Ron Brown, who's uh, going to be doing our youth improv group. We have a youth uh, improv group for the first. We started it over the summer, so it kind of mirrors our, um, our adult improv troupe. So we're starting with the youth. Ron has been taking that on himself, so he's got about seven or eight uh, kids that are involved in that. They've been having a fantastic time. I hear a lot of giggles and laughing coming out of that classroom. So uh, they'll be performing about 15, 20 minutes worth of improv games, uh, stuff that the adults are doing that would be more kid-friendly. Um, family friendly. And then the last thing we have is uh, Vicki Neitzel. She is going to be doing our sing out class, which is our small pre-choir class. Um, and they're going to be doing a rendition of the Three Billy Goats Gruff. So all of that that I just described to you is under our music and drama festival heading and it's, uh, it's a great night. It's a fun night for just to showcase the kids, what they've been working on. Um, and kind of get the kids active and involved in, in JPAC. And, and the age, what's the age group for the youth improv? For the youth improv, uh, we take them as, as young as sixth grade all the way through high school. Okay, great. So, yeah, so it's, it's, it's something for pretty much every age. From third grade through uh, graduating seniors, we've got something that we offer every semester for someone that's in that age bracket. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so what else we got coming up? Uh, that kicks off the holiday weekend, actually, of Thanksgiving. So that happens on Tuesday the 26th. And then the next day, uh, the day before Thanksgiving, on the 27th of November, we are going to be doing our uh, Brew and View. And the Brew and View is, if you're not familiar with that, uh, Rock County Brewery has partnered up with JPAC, and they provide beer sampling for the evening while we're watching um, a movie. And the movie that we've got picked out is a great one for, um, for the Thanksgiving season. It's Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. So that'll be playing, and then you'll buy your tickets, a $5 ticket. That gets you into the gallery space, which is our smaller black box theater. Um, you'll be able to watch the movie on the big screen uh, and then sample. Uh, there's five or six different brews that the Rock County Brewers will bring uh, that you can take samplings of, and then they sell other cocktails and, and brews and stuff like that. So it's brew in view. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think actually they got some, some uh, recognition recently, the Rock County Brewery. I believe you're right. Yep. Like, the, the, like the best made in, uh, made in Janesville. Could, be. Could so. be, and that'll probably be there as one of the samplings. So yeah, oh, so that kind of rounds out our Thanksgiving weekend, and then of course we're closed for Thanksgiving for four days, and then we come back, and believe it or not, we're into December, which we turn it over to this guy here, and we do uh, it's our um, Jolly Jingle weekend uh, for Janesville, and part of the Janesville Performing Arts contribution to the weekend is one of our resident groups doing their holiday show, which is uh, this year it's a Wonderful Life, which is directed by Chris over here. So yeah. tell us a little bit about it since he's already let into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it is the first weekend of December, uh, the 6th, the 7th, and the 8th. Um, 
The 6th is a 7.30 show. Uh, the 7th and the 8th are both going to be 2 p.m. matinees. Um, the third weekend, which is the 20th, 21st, and 22nd, uh, that's more of a regular weekend, which is the uh, 20th and 21st, 7.30 shows. Um, and the 22nd is a 2 p.m. show. Um, uh, if you're not familiar with the show, it's a uh, really great classic. I feel like even if you don't, uh, even if you haven't necessarily seen the movie or your parents haven't made you watch the movie, uh, it's parodied everywhere. It's a classic setup for a story that everyone I think knows at least. So. Yeah, very good. And so the production is done with Stage One organization. Yes. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen a couple of the other performances. Like 1984 was a really good one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very they twisted. Just did Fool for Love, uh, Sam Shepard. They did that back. That yep. opened their season up, which was a really nice, um, nice performance. Sam Shepard. I mean, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Sam Shepard. <laughs> a little offbeat, but uh, a great production of that. Um, tell us who's in your who's in your production. Any, any local heavy hitters? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> um, actually, the person who directed Fool for Love, uh, Nick French, is actually the lead. George Bailey, um, Karen Brown, who has a lot to do with TUI, uh, is playing Clarence. Um, uh, Mary is played by Julia Bloom. Uh, Violet is played by um, Jessalyn Garvin. Um, yeah, that, that's uh, the majority of the uh, the main cast there. Okay, so what, when's the opening day then? The 6th of December. Okay, very good. Yeah, and, and just to briefly kind of highlight, that's the Jolly Jingle weekend, so there will be a, a parade in town, uh, right. some tree lighting. There's three days of festival. We'll, we'll do another episode. Mm -hmm. Uh, it all starts on the <laughs> evening of the 6th, so we do our tree yep. lighting ceremony at 5 o'clock, which um, our, uh, one of our children's groups will be there doing the tree lighting as they've done in the past. They'll be singing a couple songs from their upcoming production of Surf and Santa, which I'll talk about in a couple of minutes here. But um, yeah, Chris, uh, give a little background on, on your directing and how you got into the whole theater scene. Yeah, so the first show I did was uh, Spring Awakening at U Rock, and I did several more shows. I think I've done a show with every single theater company in the area at this point. Um, and then I uh, assistant directed uh, the Dixie Swim Club, which was with Janesville Little Theater. And that was with Jim Stewart, mm -hmm. um, who was originally slated to direct uh, It's a Wonderful Life before he passed. Um, and I actually got to have several conversations with Jim months and months ago about It's a Wonderful Life. So it was really awesome that I got to take on this opportunity. Fantastic. So, so you rock was kind of the, the launching spot. Yeah. So there's a lot of wonderful arts that are coming through you rock. Uh, yeah. So, and we've we've had the opportunity to film a lot, at least the musical performances. So I, I really like the talent pool that's there, and I'm glad you're using your your skills here within the Janesville community. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. fantastic. So yeah, and that that uh, it's two weekends that are split there. Uh, any of the tickets that we've just announced for this, you can go to the uh, Janesville Performing Arts webpage. And you can order tickets there. It's uh, janesvillepac.org, or you can call uh, the box office directly, and that's at 608-758-0297. And we can hook you up with all kinds of tickets for um, It's a Wonderful Life and the, uh, the Music and Drama Festival that we talked about to round out November and beginning of December. Very good. Mm -hmm. Anything else hitting us in uh, December? Oh, we are into December now. <laughs> now we are into the, the thick of the holiday season, Alan. Um, yeah, so after we get done with our uh, Brew and View, It's a Wonderful Life, uh, we've got the uh, Holiday Harmonies that'll be coming in. That's our Live on Main holiday show. Um, and what that is, it's an acoustic Christmas. So if you want something a little low-key, it's not quite so um, loud and festive uh, for some things, it's more of a laid-back Christmas. So they'll be doing some uh, Christmas classics as well as some original holiday music. Um, and it's all an acoustical size, style. Uh, three of our uh, local bands in the uh, the Madison area. Um, so I'll make sure I get their names right. The Mascot Theory, Kerosene Kites, and Lost Lakes. A uh, combination of those three uh, musical groups that are in the area will be joining forces to put on the holiday harmonies. So it should be a great, uh, fantastic time to come out and um, celebrate the holidays with JPAC. We'll have the place all decked out. There'll be lots of fun, excitement and then get a really nice acoustical um, show for Christmas. I think Lost Lakes were at uh, Folk at 408. They were. Uh, a few of these bands have appeared at our uh, Folk at 408 or um, our Tastes and Tunes, which is um, more of our acoustical series that we've got at JPEG. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, the wonderful thing about uh, the theater is it's just the acoustics are so nice. Right, right. So. And it's all decked out for Christmas, so it's, it's just a really nice place to go and just kind of unwind and you know bring your family and friends and just kind of enjoy a couple of hours and, 
and come and see what JPEC has. So that's a that's our live on Main series uh, feature for the holidays. Uh, tickets are twenty five dollars. Um, you can get them online, order them at the box office, um, or just give us a call and find out what's going on in our season magazine. Um, so that'll be kind of fun. And then uh, right before that, the same weekend, we like to pack everything into JPEC, is our uh, Surfing Santa, which is a new thing for us. We started it last spring. It's our musical, our, our main stage musical review. So it's our kids' version of like mini musicals that we do. Uh, we have 35 kids aging from fourth grade all the way through uh, sophomores in high school, um, all local talent, some homeschooled kids, uh, some public school kids, parochial kids. So we get a, a good cross section of the community uh, as far as kids. And they're going to come in and they have been working very hard on their, uh, their production of Surf and Santa. Santa needs a holiday. And they decide that they're going to uh, take him to the Caribbean. Instead of delivering toys, they're going to take him to the Caribbean and some villains set in and they take over the toy toy store or the uh, the toy shop at the North Pole and it's uh it's mayhem and mm -hmm. mystery. I'm glad Santa's <laughs> on the on the positive side of surfing. Correct. Surfing is a, is a good healthy sport. Correct. And I think that's you know trying to take some of the weight that's off of them, you know, so all those cookies are kind of getting to them. So yeah. yeah. So that'll be good. We've got uh like I said 35 really talented kids uh that'll be performing. We've got two nights of the or two performances. Uh, the 13th of December at 7 o'clock, and also on the 14th of December at 1 o'clock. So in the afternoon, we've got kids, surf, and Santa, and then in the evening on the 14th, we have our holiday harmonies. So Saturday the 14th is a very busy day at JPAC. And then the following day on the 15th, uh, we are hosting another one of our resident groups, the Beloit Janesville Symphony, will be doing their holiday pops concert okay. on the 15th. So that's always a good time for the families and friends to come out and uh support the symphony, support the arts in the community. So uh, just a lot of really great things happening down at JPEC. For a complete list of everything we have going on down there, you can always go to our website. Uh, we do have our season magazines. We have a few of them left. They're flying out of the, the building pretty quick, but we still do have a few left. But otherwise, all of our uh, calendar of events is listed on our, our webpage. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right, I, thought, I think that pretty much covers. But that covers everything. Hmm? Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's some other stuff happening in January, but we'll talk about those at a later date, like the, the wonderful Tales of Our Farms. Tales of Our Farms. Uh, so. January is our local talent month. So if you're interested in something happening right after the holidays, uh, January is a great time to come down to JPAC. Um, also keep in mind, too, some of these things that we're talking about, if you're looking for great stocking stuffers, we have gift certificates that are available for any of our shows. Um, they carry over from year to year. If you're always looking for someone that's really hard to shop for, someone that likes the arts and it supports local arts community, um, that'd be a great you know stocking stuffer or a gift idea. So if you're looking for something like that, give us a give us a jingle. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think that kind of wraps things up. Unless you have anything else to add. No, I'm okay. okay. All right. Very good. Thank you, Alan, and Merry Christmas. Hey, Merry <laughs> Christmas to you. And remember, James, well, there's a, there's a gem. It's JPEC, and it's uh, right next door down the street or whatever. And the entertainment is definitely going to be in full swing this coming season. So be sure to check them out, JPEC. Ta-da. <laughs> <laughs>